Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Tetrobot and Company. This is a game that recently came out on Steam. Just came out today, but this video will probably be going up a couple of days after it's actually come out. And it's from Swing Swing Submarine, who you may remember for coming out with Blocks That Matter on Xbox Live Indie Games as well as on Steam in like the fall or spring of 2011, depending on which platform you're talking about. This is a pseudo-sequel to that game with a lot of differences that you might have not uh, necessarily expected. It's going for 12 bucks on Steam if you're watching this during its opening week sale. It'll be $10.80 as opposed to to $12. But anyway, we're going to start on file A. This 10% that I have here represents about an hour of play. I would be very surprised if this game ends up being 10 hours long. I think I'm just really bad at puzzle games, so, you know, take that for what you will. Um, we are going to just start up uh, our campaign here, and uh, it does utilize kind of a progression similar to something like a Super Mario 64 or something like that, or a Banjo-Kazooie, where uh, you have to unlock these memory cubes, and the more of these you get, the more worlds you unlock. So obviously I have not unlocked the third world yet, uh, and eventually, you know, you can see how many worlds there are here. It looks like maybe 10 of them with five levels each. That seems fairly likely. Anyway, let's pull ourselves back to the uh, front here. By the way, should mention I'm playing this with a keyboard and mouse, and that is uh, a little bit different than the way that I played Blocks That Matter. I liked Blocks That Matter an awful lot, uh, but this game isn't necessarily exactly the same kind of gameplay. We're going to get started here, and we'll start from the very beginning, and maybe we'll play through all of Chapter 1 and some of Chapter 2 to give you a feel for what's going on in this game. So, Blocks That Matter, to set the stage here a little bit, was a puzzle platformer, and what was gimmicky about it is you played as like this Tetrobot. Uh, this is kind of like a hyper-stylized, portalized version of that Tetrobot, I guess. And you walked around and you could suck in some blocks from the environment, and then you could make Tetronominoes with those blocks to uh, help you survive throughout the world. So, in this game, what's different is that we're kind of in like some kind of vitreous fluid, or maybe we can just fly. And you can move wherever you want, and navigation is entirely done just by clicking the mouse around. So, there's no more gravity pulling you down. There's there's no more like platforming puzzles. This is very much a pure puzzle game in contrast to uh, what Blocks the Matter was, which was kind of like a, a weird little puzzle platformer with a gimmick that I, I liked a lot. So this was a kind of jarring at first. And uh, it does take a little bit of while, a little bit of time to get used to it if you've played Blocks That Matter, because it's similar but fairly vastly different uh, as you get further. And the similarities are mostly aesthetic. Graphically, still looks a lot like Blocks That Matter. Uh, you could basically call this like a series of tubes, the video game, because we, we are constantly going to be using tubes to go from level to level. Uh, there's going to be switch puzzles. There's going to be physics-based puzzles, and we'll see those as we move onwards. But our overall goal is uh, going to be to get all of those memory cubes and eventually unlock some later levels. So we just move around here at first. Navigation's pretty quick and pretty smooth. Graphically, I like the way the game looks. It's clean, but also, you know, despite the fact that it's based on cubes, this is one of the few based on cube games that I would be very surprised to hear people say is a Minecraft ripoff. Which is kind of surprising because, uh, or kind of funny, I guess, because, uh, you know, one of the original plot points for Blocks That Matter originally was that um, you're trying to save Notch from being kidnapped. Like, Notch and the creator of Tetris uh, got kidnapped and you had to, you know, you were his little robot and you had to go uh, help him out. Or help them out, I suppose. Uh... And this is the, again, pseudo-sequel to that. So I haven't encountered too much in the way of plot, but maybe we'll encounter something like that at some point. Wait a minute, let me come back here. Is there any way for me to get this memory cube? I have never seen that uh, jerk before either. Wait a minute. How do we turn this thing off? Can we just click the switch? No, I can get buzzed if I go past that. Ah, that's weird. Okay. Maybe we'll find a block that we can place in front of that or something like that. Uh, just to see if I can actually make this happen, because I do want to get those memory cubes, I, the ones that I've already gotten, you know, getting those again isn't going to do anything for me. Uh, we'll encounter a puzzle very soon here. So, one of the principal elements of the puzzles are these switches. Usually, you know, despite being a pure puzzler, movement is a, a very big part of it, because uh, you need to move, away, or move around in such a way for that switch, for example, that you don't hit it twice, because if you hit it twice, you'll obviously deactivate. So there is a little bit of movement planning, but it doesn't factor in all that much. What am I missing here that would allow me to solve this? Because the fact that I only have one here is... Oh, wait. I totally just figured it out. There's switches that we encounter a little bit later. All right. So we've already gotten the, the moon piece, which I think is down here. Yeah. So we need to find, like, the switch that has the sun on it. And that might actually have been one that we went to a little bit earlier. So we can just uh, sneak our way through here uh, easily. I kind of screwed myself up there. But there's no fail state that I've encountered uh, unless you accidentally... Uh, kind of screw yourself. So I should be able to get this memory cube. So it, it took a little while for me to get into the actual uh, mechanics of the game. But keep in mind, this is the very first level. Levels typically, you know, take around five minutes maybe. I'm going to suck up this cube. And that is something that you can do as this version of Tetrobot is you can uh, suck up cubes from your environment and use them to solve puzzles. In hindsight, you know, going to the first level was probably a pretty bad example of how the actual mechanics of the game work. But it does give you a feel for some of the superficial differences and some of the meaningful differences uh, between this and uh, Blocks That Matter. So I didn't actually want to go to the 
next level instead. Uh, why don't we exit back to the main, not main menu, but the level select screen. One thing I don't really like is that this does have kind of like a, an iOS interface to it, which I find very strange because I, I do believe that this is a PC only release. Uh, I've went a little bit further into the game here, but yeah, it may, it's a little bit complicated to navigate your way around as someone who doesn't, you know, necessarily use my mobile interface all that often. So, yes, this is Tetrobot's ability. Basically, he has two abilities. One of them is to uh, suck up these blocks, and the other one is to spit them out. So, for this level, they're basically teaching us that sometimes you will have to make tetronominoes in order to uh, solve a puzzle and open these switches. So right now, question mark on this switch. We can see there's question mark blocks over here. When we fill these up, this switch will activate and we'll be able to go through this gate here. So you can just use your mouse wheel to select a block and then, um, you know, use right mouse button to kind of throw the blocks uh, where you want them to go. So we'll just platform in the very loosest sense of the word here. And, you know, we can shoot through blocks like that. But as you can see, uh, there is some gravity applied to the blocks. Uh, for some of the materials anyway, and different materials have different properties. So what we probably want to do, if I had to guess, is sand at the bottom, because sand is uh, a little bit less sturdy than wood. And then uh, if we shoot some wood blocks over here at the top, they will actually stick around because wood is a little sturdier, and uh, we'll be able to go through this switch. We'll encounter other blocks. Uh, when you go through that purple beam, by the way, it destroys all your blocks. Sometimes, you know, using blocks to solve a puzzle, and then coming back to uh, a different room later with those blocks can be important for your success. So, on this one we've got to put blocks here, here, and here uh, in order to solve this puzzle. So there will be four blocks that we can pick up at some point. I think we have to go through the top pipe here. Uh, as different as this is from Blocks That Matter, and as disappointed as I initially was that it is so different than from Blocks That Matter, um, I, I like it nonetheless. It's kind of a, a nifty puzzler with a mechanic that you don't see, or I've never seen before, I should say. So, you know, different is not always necessarily worse. I would be inclined to say I probably preferred blocks that matter to this uh, as of the amount of experience I've played so far, but this is a lot better than I expected, uh, given the kind of... Uh, how shockingly different it was from the uh, the last one. So, uh, we need to make this tetronomino here in order to get this to block, or this block to drop, and you can see that it's a little translucent. I think that means I've gotten it before. But, you know, you might be thinking, well, why don't we just... You can't set blocks, by the way. You can't just set them down. You actually have to throw them. So you do have to use physics a little bit. Because if we just throw it like this, then you can see, like, oh, well, we definitely don't nearly have uh, the necessary kind of parameters to make this the puzzle work from this context. So we'll, we'll take our blocks back. This is one that probably most of you watching this at home have figured out already. But we come up here to the very service, and then we just... Uh, I think we want to go sand, wood... Sand and we have to put wood in the middle because remember if we put sand in the middle uh, The sand block on the left side would just fall down because it's not sturdy wood block on the other hand is sturdy So we can easily pick up this uh, memory cube and this is another important aspect here is the the resource management is uh, Constantly recycling the blocks that you've used and getting ready to use those on another puzzle So it's very rare to it's one of those puzzle games where it's not like there's gates to finish a level, if that makes sense. It's kind of like Braid in the sense that... Actually, let's try to solve this one first. It's kind of like Braid in the sense that finishing a level, extraordinarily easy. It's just getting the actual important pieces on the level that is more difficult. So, how do we set up uh, this situation right here? I don't think... I, I didn't get this one before. I'm hoping with my newfound skills, maybe I'll be able to. You might be thinking, well, we can just fire like two blocks over like this. And then we can start building the tetronomino. But the problem with this is that there's no way for me to then get behind this block and then take it. Like, you have to have line of sight on it and be... And have it be the first block in your line of sight. So that wouldn't necessarily work for us. Oh, wait, I have an idea here. What if... Okay, so I have to, like, get a wood block here. And then I could just throw this block. Here's what I'm thinking. If I have a wood block in this position, then I could just shoot this one over and it'll just land like that, as you can see. I think I may have finally solved the problem here. Okay, this is why I like going over uh, puzzles that I've already done, because, you know, occasionally you can make some good stuff happen like this. So in this case, what I can do is uh, fire a wood block like this. Remember, wood is sturdy. And then we've created a very sturdy kind of platform here that we can use uh, for the rest of the game. And I can just do this. And... Then how do you make this work? Oh, okay, I've got it. We shoot this one over here, and then we do this sand block here to create like another kind of sand platform. Then we pick up this one, and the, this is the other mechanic that you need to learn. When you throw something, it will snap and attach to the next closest block uh, of its same type if there is one on the way. So for example, like that. 
Okay, so that's one I didn't get before. So that will be enough to unlock the third world here. Uh, you know, not the third world in canon or real real life, but the third world of the game, obviously. Uh, so we did manage to pick up the puzzle piece there. And I, I prefer puzzle games like this where completing the level is very, very easy. You can constantly progress to a new puzzle in case you're stuck on something. Uh, to games where you're actually gated more formally. And I say this because... Uh, it, it, it lets you, like, learn more skills throughout the game, and then later you come back and you're like, Ah, so this is how you do it. And, you know, that's exactly what I'm getting at right now. So, again, on this one, we're going to need to use the unique properties of Lumber here. And, uh, I, again, this is another one I didn't solve mm, before. And, actually, this is not going to do it, because that's going to, yeah, cause that to fall. Hmm, let me think about this. Maybe we go sand, wood... And then wood here, but then what do we do to get this stuck? Because if I, hmm, this is a weird one. I feel like I, I feel like I'm close. By the way, there's like no active puzzles, like at least in, that I've encountered so far. It's never been like something about reaction time. If there's a physics-based thing that's going to happen, it happens before you can react to it. So we go sand, sand. The problem is that um. Wait, wood, sand... If, if we just do what I was trying to do first, which is, like, sand, sand, uh, wood. Wood will not connect to the sand block, right? So it'll just slide too far. And then I can shoot another wood block, but then it'll fall, so it's not good. Uh, what I need to do is create a wood platform here somehow, but I don't know how. Um, it seems like this is the right first step, like shooting a wood block like this, and then another wood block... But then the problem is, how do you actually complete this? I don't know if maybe you shoot this up there. That doesn't do anything for us, obviously. Uh, and if I try to take this one, then the wood block will just fall down. And we'll be basically in exactly the same position that we started in. This is a weird one. But, you know, I could just say fuck it to this puzzle. Because this puzzle is maybe a little bit more difficult. And uh, rather than waste my time kind of tediously trying to solve that, we can just go to the end of the level and then, you know, take our memory cube and leave. So it is one of those games where, to some extent, you kind of choose your own difficulty. And I like that a lot. Because in puzzle games where your progress is gated by individual puzzles, the temptation, or the, sorry, the, not the temptation, but the tendency for me is to get stuck on them occasionally and then get frustrated because I can't progress in the game. Whereas in this, even if you, uh, you know, can't beat a puzzle, you can quite easily just move onwards uh, after. Afterwards, and uh, that or come back to it later once you have more skills. So there are um, in each world There's five different levels that kind of take that series of tubes kind of style of gameplay And then there's one extra level uh, and what this does is it gives you a key I'm not sure if that key is actually used to unlock the next world But these are entirely just puzzle solving levels, and this is where you really put your skills to the test Uh like, with everything that you've learned with the worlds themselves. This is kind of like the final exam for each world and, and the mechanics that you've learned. So we can hold up the six, six blocks at the same time, and we have to create this kind of U-shape here. So what we can probably figure out right off the bat is that we do not want uh, sand to be our base. That's not going to work out very well for us. What I should point out, by the way, is that blocks that matter, very much more a traditional kind of platformer with a small puzzle elements. This is obviously much more of a pure puzzler. Um, but uh, there were actual boss battles in that where you had to platform, I think. It's been a little while, but I thought that there were actual boss battles uh, where you had to, like, run away from a boss or, you know, drop tetronominoes to block them or something like that. But again, it has been ages. So, um, let, let's talk about how we're going to start building this little... Uh, thing that we've got here. I think what we want to do is take some stone with us to start with. And I'm going to make a stone base and then wood and then sand on top. I did beat this on my first try when I actually played through the, uh, the game myself. By the way, I haven't mentioned this yet. Uh, this game has fantastic music. And right now it's a little bit, um, you know, maybe tinny for some people's taste. But the music overall, absolutely fantastic. Very good, uh, atmospheric, and, and really adds to the atmosphere of the game. So this is how I'm building a stone base here. It's, uh... I've forgotten the name of the musician. It's like Morcubus or something like this. Morcubus, I think. I hope I'm citing that correctly, but uh, the same person that did uh, some of the music for Knit Stories and uh, also the same person that did the music for Blocks That Matter and the soundtrack in Blocks That Matter was one of the uh, best parts of the game for sure. So, uh, I'm going to use a stone block here because it'll lock on to the other stone block and then I can create kind of a, um, a barrier that I can then send other things through with here. So do I still have two sand blocks? I don't. But let's try this. Okay, so we put like a wood block here. And then if we shoot the wood block across, it should work. We're very close to solving the puzzle, obviously. Um, but maybe then we want to do like, we'll, we'll take these back. 
And we'll then shoot the stone one. Oh, it won't work though. Yeah. Oh, we can do it like this so we can move here and then shoot the stone block first. And then the sand block. And then this should very easily complete the U that we have going on here. So this is just kind of like, again, uh, prove that you understand what's actually going on uh, and, and the mechanics of the game. Stone is a little bit sturdier than, than uh, wood, I guess, is the, the take-home message here. And of course, sand, not sturdy at all. In any case, though. So we, we've gotten the key. We already had the key before, but... Um, we will then check out a couple of levels in World 2, but to be quite honest with you, I doubt that you need to see too much more uh, of what's going on in Tetrobot and Co. to know uh, whether or not you're going to want to play it. Uh, every level has kind of like its own unique quirk as well, by the way, right? So this one is going to be Puddin' Bot, and this one we're actually Wada Bot, which means we're, you know, underwater. Uh, and there's some cool mechanics that you learn here. There's some like Donkey Kong Country stuff uh, going on with like more or less like barrels that you can get into that will shoot you from side to side as you can see with this one right here. And we're going to use this when it comes to solving puzzles so you can eventually aim them and stuff like that which is kind of cool. But let's just complete this first level and you'll get kind of a feel for how this goes. The major complaint that I think most people are going to have with, um, well I think people are going to have two major complaints with Tetrabot and company. One of them is going to be... Uh, and I apologize for not narrating everything I'm doing with the puzzles here, but hopefully you can kind of see it for yourself as I'm going through this. Uh, one of them is going to be, this is not a sequel to block Blocks That Matter. This is a, a vastly different game uh, with like substantially and kind of jarringly different mechanics. And that's maybe not something that's totally conveyed in the marketing material. I'm not sure though, because I haven't looked at the marketing material, but that would be something that, you know, would obviously, if I was a person that loved Blocks That Matter and I'm checking out this game as a result, that would be something that maybe I would take a little bit of an uh, issue with, you know? Uh, by the way, these um, kind of glass glass blocks here are actually known as mesh and we can suck blocks through them but we can't shoot blocks through them which is important to know. Uh, the other thing is that it is a little expensive in my opinion for uh, a game of this kind and that's not to say this is not worth $10.80 or $12 depending on when you buy it. It's just my way of saying that there are other games with similar kind of styles to this that are cheaper than this. Uh, which, oh, we can, this is a very easy memory block to get that I didn't notice before. You can just move this kind of like homing or tractor beam out of the way and then shoot yourself down here and just easily get that and then put this back. Okay. Um, right. So I, I've never wanted to say, or I'm very rarely one to say that this game is not worth X amount of dollars. Whenever I say something like that, it's entirely uh, just to emphasize that there are other games that are similar to this that you can get for cheaper. Never my way of saying, you know, the developer's time is not worth, or developer's time and effort, I guess is not worth this amount of money. It is instead, uh, you know, just my way of saying there are other games in this kind of niche that are perhaps a little bit cheaper, and that's the way I feel about this right now. So I'm, I'm not saying you're not going to get $12 worth of enjoyment out of this, but I will say is that, you know, there are other puzzle games that might, in my opinion, be better that you can pick up cheaper if you haven't gotten them already. Uh, but still charming enough. Uh, let's shoot this pipe in here, and that should allow us to complete this level. It will also, by completing this pipe, this also opens up like a new area that we can get to. So I'll enter through here and see if maybe there's like a memory cube or something that I can get uh, that otherwise I would not have been able to. We've already gotten this one, but I can at least show you how to do it. Basically, you just suck up the memory cube, drop it down, pick it up yourself, and then uh, go to the exit. So we did still miss that middle one, I think. I don't know how to get that one, actually. But I picked up one that I didn't get last time. So what I really like about this game, you know, if we're going to go through an inventory here, visual style I think is, is unique and cool. That your mileage might vary with respect to that. Music is fantastic, absolutely great soundtrack. Uh, and I really like the, the structure of the game, the way that it's set up and the way that you can revisit earlier levels and kind of get more value out of them. Uh, also, it seems relatively long. I said earlier 10 hours might be a little bit of a stretch, and, you know, I, I do agree with that. Um, but you can see, you know, we played for like 20 minutes here, and I got, what, like another 1% through the game? Uh, there's also, like, there's a social media kind of aspect that happens through here, so as you get introduced to a new block, uh, it'll share a status and you'll learn things about it, like, um, you know, for example, the memory. It liked a game, hidden in plain sight. That's what the memory cube does. It's right there, but it's hard to get to, right? Or we can, you know, check out, uh, some of the journal, which conveys the story. There were kind of cutscenes in, um, Blocks of Matter, which there are not here, but anyway. Um, if you're watching it for the story, or you're playing it for the story, you might be a little bit disappointed by the way that it's told in this. I also do not see a level editor... Maybe there is, but uh, I have not encountered a level editor, and in Blocks That Matter, the level editor uh, was one of the coolest aspects. So it's a little bit weird and a little bit jarring that this is di so different um, from Blocks That Matter, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It is, in my opinion, not necessarily as fun and unique as uh, Blocks That Matter, but it's a unique little puzzler in its own right. And uh, there will be a link in the video description if you want to pick this up on Steam. Would I recommend you do it as an impulse purchase? Probably not, for if people who are on the fence. 
Uh, this is probably more of a, you know, wait and see or maybe a uh, wait and get it in a Steam sale type purchase. But I definitely think for people who like what they see, you can get your value out of this. And as long as you don't mind uh, paying a little bit more than you might pay for some other puzzle games in this niche, totally cool. Again, great audio vid visual experience in my opinion. And uh, cool mechanics and satisfying to go back to levels that you've already done before. Uh, caveats being that it is substantially different than the game that preceded it and is kind of like a spiritual predecessor to this. But in any case, there's a link in the video description to pick up the game on Steam if you are interested. Again, it's $12 or $10.80 for its opening week sale. That'll do it for this uh, video of my impressions, I suppose. As always, if you liked the video or enjoyed the video, I encourage you to click the like button. It does help me out a lot and, uh, you know, spread the awareness of the game and my opinion on it to the rest of YouTube. Subscribe if you want to see more impressions of games like this. And of course, uh, I look forward to reading your comments. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.